all right so this very first video that i'm going to be doing will not be showing you any highlights but what i will do for this first video is to give you the highs and lows of uber soca cruise Zim? all right let's start with the lows we'll start at the low point and we'll build up the momentum all right so the first thing is well we weren't leaving until monday the 21st so i got into miami because we were leaving from port of miami and i got into miami on a saturday night this was a low for me personally not for everybody else but just for me um so apparently that weekend taylor swift was always also going to be in miami zine now what i left from hartford airport and i was going straight to miami i got to hartford airport like two hours before my flight was supposed to leave but i literally kid you not the lines were literally going through the door because everybody was heading to miami but taylor swift because you know me always boast about a small airport these small airports are never that full zine anyways by the time i got around to coming up to the, the front my flight was already completely locked so i couldn't get to miami on that flight right so they rerouted me from hartford to charlotte and then from charlotte i was supposed to go to miami cool um so i got on the, the charlotte flight was leaving like about 30 minutes after my flight had already left so i managed to catch that one got into charlotte and oh one other thing that flight was supposed to leave at 6 15 for charlotte but it ended up didn't leaving until like 7 a.m because if it had left on time i would have still have been able to make my um flight from charlotte to miami and i would have gotten to miami like about probably 11 a.m the latest right the flight didn't leave until 7 a.m so by the time i got to charlotte that connecting flight literally the funny tarmac closed i couldn't get on the flight so um i was like okay cool so they told me in charlotte that because of all the mad rush of all these people going to see taylor swift majority of the american flights that are leaving are already booked and they had like 10 or 12 flights leaving from charlotte going to miami but they're solidly booked so i would have to go on standby hoping that somebody misses their flight people when i tell you that i got to charlotte at 9 a.m and i did not get on a flight till 6 p.m me was literally an airport monkey i was running from gate to gate trying to expedite the process what can i do where can i go who can i speak to because at this point we literally do a whole work shift in the people them airports it was so annoying but anyways it's six o'clock come around you know and then i tell myself i wait for a 10 p.m flight zine at this point i had been on the road from 2 a.m Zine, I literally left Danbury, drive to Hartford to make my flight, couldn't get on because of the Swifties. Reach a Charlotte, can't get a flight because of the Swifties. And now you tell me, so the flight Omega catch, I got to have me at this airport for literally 20 hours. Now I know people have these experiences and I'm, it's not unique to me, but trust me, when you're in this situation, I'm not telling no lie. It's when the six o'clock flight, flight get called, I'm going to run from gate A's to gate E. I'm going to say, everybody, I get on to me, I'm going to stand up in the car ball. Because the frustration licked me like licked me for six. So I went up to the gate agent and I said to her, ma'am, I didn't book my flight by chance. I booked my flight a week in advance, right? With all of the delays that you guys are having and because you have overbooked, which American overbook all of the flight. Them. Like when you look for the persons who they on standby, you have like all 35 people are yet. Overbook the flight. Them. So I didn't go to her in a malicious or angry way. I was like, look, I have booked this flight for weeks now. Weeks now I'm going to book the flight, yeah, right? This is not my fault why I'm still here 20 hours later, practically waiting for a flight. I need to get on a flight. So anyways, this flight now, one person decided to give up them seat, see? And there was also another person they were waiting on to come back. When they realized that, because when you give up your seat for an American, they were giving away like $850 flight credits, right? So the guy, like every gate I go, he bump himself off of the list. So he was practically just accruing miles. Just every every gate at 850. I'm gonna see this man from in the morning. So I know the man they left. He might bought 10 flight can go on for the next year for free depending on where I go. And I was just like, no, this is not what I'm there for. I'm not, first of all, I can't book myself coming up and stand by, Zine. But that's not what I was here for. And I never wanted to risk it by waiting until trying to get a flight on Sunday because the Taylor Swift tour was still going to be there on Sunday, which means probably all of them, they fly the full tour, you know? So anyway, it's just like, all right, this one guy never show up, really. I got in, I get on a plane. I never got to Miami until like probably 8.30 or so. Managed to, because at this, at this point, my plane, my bags, my checked bags were in Miami from nine o'clock because Hartford checked them straight through to Miami. And so, I couldn't do no washy washy, but just there in the airport, I'd be a, a frustrated. I had wipes though, I had wipes. And um, I got on the flight, I got to Miami, met up with my friend. She was going to the Taylor Swift concert before she went on Uber. She had a great time, but by the time she got back to the room, I was half asleep. So I was trying to get some rest because I had just a long day. I'm just being on the down, saw her, and then Sunday we woke up, we were having a good time. So that was the first negative for me. Um, in terms of other negatives, hold on, the washing machine is very loud. All right, so we're following up on the, there are not so much negatives. There are more so the lesser experiences that I had. So on Sunday, me and my friend, we went to get some last minute essentials from CVS, you know, walking around, checking our bags, make sure we have everything ready because the cruise wasn't going to start until Monday. 
Um, we were staying in a loft brick hill. They were okay. Um, a loft, I think, is owned by Marriott, which remind me I need to sign up with Marriott so I can start accruing these points. Because these hotels will give you a lot of services if you have if you are on your point system, similar to how airlines do it. And I know I'm late to the show, but I'm going to start now. A loft was okay. We didn't really have room service or anything like that, but they were very nice. The, the customer service was very good, and I know they had a lot on their plate because it was three hotels that were accommodating the Ubersoka guests, and it was like 2,700 of us on that cruise. So, like, give or take, if even 1,500 people were staying at three hotels, you know that would have been a lot of people, right? But the customer service was on point. I can't say that. Um, Sunday night, we went to the pre-party for Ubersoka. It was good. It was held a little away from Brickell. I don't remember the address, but it was at, I think, at this club called The Lady. So, apparently, that is a very busy strip of road. And our party location was at a smaller venue, but this smaller venue had to accommodate so many people. And a lot of the celebrities from the boat were coming on. There was Faye on there. I saw quite a few of the DJs that are big in Soka there as well. DJ Jell, who gave me a kiss. I was like, Jell, wait, you single? <laughs> I kid, I kid. Um, but that was a lesser thing for me because the venue was so small, it was kind of packed at, at one point. You couldn't really even move around. Um, Monday, in terms of a lesser experience, was we had to wait a little bit, but it wasn't an extra long wait where we were uncomfortable. There was soca music playing, you could have drinks, we had to go through the customs and, and border patrol, as you know, and checking in was hassle-free. There was this older lady there that checked me and my friend in, I don't remember what her name is, but she was like an older lady. She was one of them seasoned ladies who was no nonsense, but she was such a nice little presence, like she reminded me so much of my grandmother, and we were just vibing with her and laughing with her, and it was, she was, to the book. To the tea, but so friendly. That's not a lesser experience, guys. I'm, at this point, I'm just I walk on a truly experience with me because this not seem like me. I don't know lesser experience, right? But she was just such a friendly person, and she made her experience from there even better. They had to wait to get on the ship because we were on Norwegian Jade, and they were literally just turning around from another cruise. So we had to wait for them to like clean up and get ready. That wait time was like two, two and a half hours, so it wasn't too bad because we got there at about um, we got to the ship port at about one o'clock, and by four o'clock we were on the ship. We didn't have our luggage with us because they took our luggage and so they told us that they would have them delivered to the room. I would say by about six o'clock, seven o'clock, we had our luggage. So we were able to get into the room, you know, kind of relax for a little bit, go out, have drinks, meet people until our bags came. So that was fine. Um, Monday had parties. I'm not going to talk about the parties now because I want to do that in a separate video. But another negative, this is a bad experience for me because this was my first time on a cruise and um, the seasickness is no joke. So my friend who has had cruises before said to me, Chanel, even before we leave Miami, you need to start taking Dramamine. I was like, oh me, I'm a big nurse. You can't tell a nurse off of them. When we go on the boat, me start taking the Dramamine. She's like, no, you need to start making them work before you get on this boat because seasickness is no joke. And guys, let me tell you something. With all of my stubbornness, waiting until I got on the boat to take the Dramamine was one of the worst things I have done. I should have started with Dramamine so it could get into my system early. Because on Tuesday, when I woke up and that vertigo hit and I'm staggering like I'm drunk, but I haven't had any drinks. And the, more, the, the nausea, I was about to say morning sickness. The nausea and the seasickness kick in. By the way, I do not have morning sickness. May I tell you no say? Roll me in a one barrel down the hill and I wouldn't know nothing different. I sick like a dog. I was throwing up. I was having diarrhea. I couldn't stand up straight. My head just a wobble. My friend is like, let's get you on the upper deck. You need to see the horizon. You need to get the fresh air in. Or else you're not going to feel better. And I'm literally curled up in the bed like this. I'm like, I cannot move. I can't move. My head can't lift up. Anyways, I managed to drag myself out of bed. And um, this like is about 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon now because every day they have theme parties. So the pool parties in the day start at like 1 p.m. And then the night parties start at like 9 p.m. So this pool party was called Atlantis. So I'm going to put on my Atlantis outfit and I'm going to stagger up on the upper deck, get some fresh air in. And that's when I actually started to feel better. So she did have a point. And my nurse's skills never kick in there. So by the way, I will tell you that I must apologize to her. Openly, Christina, I apologize to you because nurses make the worst patients and I would never take any telling from her because... Me hate, for one, I hate people fussing over me. I'm not used to it. I've been an independent from the day I was born. But I just think me need to take care of myself. Or you can't tell me what to do better than I know what to do. And she was really trying to take care of me. And I was just like, girl, put a sock in it. Leave me alone. But she still stuck by me. And Chris, there's apologies for you. And I would also like to thank you. And thanks for being so gracious. Because if I did meet up on the other end, I would have the first and tell them for one about them business. Go did a push because. May I try to help you? You'll be stubborn. Mm -mm. Thank you, love. Um, yeah, so the seasickness was absolutely the worst part of this trip. But you know what? With taking the Dramamine, it started to subside. So by Tuesday night, I was good for the road again. Um, and that's basically all the negatives I can think of, think of from the schools. I don't know that there were any others. Don't know. Next video, that video is going to be the positives of the trip, okay?